Let's learn how to search a list of objects looking for a specific value. So I'm going to go ahead and create a brand new uh, file project, file new project, and we'll go ahead and do a console app.net framework, and we'll call it search list, and click on OK. Let's go ahead and go over to our project, right mouse click, let's create a brand new class. You should be used to doing this now. Right mouse click, add class, we'll call it student.cs, and we'll come in here and add a public string name and a public double GPA, and we'll add a method public string get data, which will simply return this dot name concatenated with a colon, concatenated with this dot GPA. And that's what the method returns. And so we have two instance variables and the method. Once you do that, go ahead and save it. Let's go back over to the program and let's create our list. So you're going to type in the word list less than sign and you specify the data type. We're going to make a list of objects so the data type is student. That's the name of the class or the objects that we're going to make. I'll type in the word list. I'm going to go ahead and put the word list rather than LST because that L can be a little confusing with the number one. List students equals new. Make another list less than student. And then at the very end you add the parenthesis parenthesis so that you call the constructor to make the list of student objects. Doesn't mean you have any objects yet, but the list will now be created. Now that the list is created, let's go ahead and add objects to it. List students dot add, and we'll make a new student object. And that actually says make a new student object and add it to the list. So it increases the size of the list by one and puts an object in it. Let's then access that object by doing square bracket, zero square bracket, dot, and we'll say name is equal to mini, and list students, bracket, zero bracket, dot, GPA equals 4.0. So this now says create the list variable that will hold the list of student objects make a student object, add it to the list, increase the size by one, go access that element of the list because array, uh, lists are zero based. That first element contains an object, go access the name attribute for that object, change it. Go access the GPA attribute for that object, change it. And I'm going to copy that, uh, I'm going to highlight it, control C, and then I'm just going to paste that couple of times. That will be object 1 and object 2. And this will be Mickey. Mickey is 3.0 and Donald will be a 3.5. So by the time I'm done with this list, I now have three objects in it. In position 0 is Minnie, position 1 is Mickey, position 2 is Donald and they're objects with the attributes. Now that I have that, I could go and create a new variable. we we'll create a string variable, s search. Um, s search. And I just, I like to do that. Either one works. And then right here, let's go ahead and prompt the user and say, who do you want to find? And then we'll say s search is equal to the console dot read line. So this will now say, who do you want to find? They'll type something from the keyboard and we'll store it to that value. Now I could actually search through the entire list for int i count equals zero as long as i count is less than the list of students dot count. Remember, with a list, it's count, not length, and it's an attribute, not a method. 
I count plus plus. So there's your for loop. We're going to say stay in this for loop starting with zero. As long as our counter is less than the number of objects, we'll increment. And in the loop itself, we now want to say if the list students bracket I count. So the first time through, I count is zero. So we say go to the first element of the list. And let's look at the name and see if it equals whatever you're trying to search. So there's the dot name equals whatever we're searching. Put the curly braces there. And if we do find it, let's just put a found it. And we can print out the GPA. Um, S search. In fact, instead of doing that, let's just print off the object because we already have that. List students dot uh, square bracket I count, which gives me access to the object I'm working with get data, parenthesis, parenthesis. So that will actually say, go to the object we're working with, call that method. One other thing we want to do is, let's just go ahead and do a console.readline to pause the screen. So let's run it and see if we find mini. Mini, enter. Found it, mini has a four. So that's how you can search a list of objects. So once again, you have a loop. As long as the counter is less than the count of the list, go grab the object for a zero, then one, then two, however many elements. Grab the attribute, check the equals, what are you searching for, and then you can display whatever you want to do. Another thing we could do, I'm going to go ahead and comment this out, is we could use a different method to find um, values in that list. So let's go ahead and create a brand new object. We'll say student o found equals. We'll have our list of students. And then we're going to call the find method. Now the find method works a lot like that for each. Do you remember in the for each, uh, you had something like this, where you said for each, You'd work with that list, and you'd say, for each item in the list, grab the first one, put it into that variable, which is a student object. And then we could do anything we wanted with that object. I could say, oh, student dot get data. And then it would come up and grab the next item in the list, put it into that variable. The next item in the list, put it in that variable. And it would continue to do this until there are no more elements in the list. In other words, it's just a for loop. This for each is just a for loop. But what's interesting about it is that it's automatically smart enough to know it's working with the list and it's going to grab one atom at a time from the list and put it into that variable. So how does that actually work? So we said use the list object, go do the find method, and the, what the find method does is it uses what we call a lambda expression to where we say some variable name. Call it whatever you want. I'm going to call mine ostude equal greater than. Now, this is different. This is not a less than equal sign. This is an equal greater than sign. And we use it when building certain expressions. This equal greater than says we're building what they call a lambda expression. And what's going to happen is this find is going to work a lot like that for each, where it says it's going to go and work with the entire list, grab the first item, and stick it into that variable. We didn't declare that variable anywhere else. The find is taking care of that for us. It throws it into that variable, and now we could say if ostude.name equals whatever we're trying to search for. Once again, then we have a semicolon there. So this says, let's go and find, working with this list, one at a time, the find methods puts the first object into that variable and then says, hey, object.name, are you equal to whatever you're searching? If it's true, it returns that current object. 
or a reference to that object to who's ever waiting on this side. That's why we said declare a variable of type O found. So O found, which is a student, now has the object that we found. So we could say O found dot get data parenthesis parenthesis. If O found is not equal to null, then we want to go ahead and print out what we found. Otherwise, we can print out not found. So once again, how is it working? The find method works with a list. The find says grab an object out of the list one at a time. Put it into that variable that find is going to take care of creating. And then it says go use this expression if that object's name is equal to whatever you're searching for. And remember, we got that data up here on the keyboard. Who do you want to find? And we got data from the keyboard. If we found it, either way, if we found it, we would return the object to here. If we didn't find it, then that object is still going to be null. So in other words, this find takes care of creating and instantiating the ill found object. Let's see if it works. We'll go ahead and run it. Let's look for mini. It found mini. Let's run it again. And this time, let's go look for Goofy. Goofy's not in our list. It says not found. So that's how the find method could work for you using what we call a lambda expression. Also be aware that I'm just using the equals method. We could have just said a double equal sign and looked at the string variable that way. Same thing should work. If I run that one more time and I go to try to find mini, it still found it because we're using the double equal rather than the equals method. If you're using other languages like Java, then that double equal isn't going to work for you. So that's another way you could clean it up just a little bit more. And that's how you search for data in a list of objects.